We begin with breaking news today. I'm Sheree Honeycutt at the intersection of Highway AB and County Road 303, where the search is underway for 23-year-old Zachary Johnston. And we also in Southeast Missouri have lots of factories that are going out of business. 900 people just lost yes. jobs yes. here in Aranda um, due to their jobs going to China. What do you have to say to them? They're going to be looking for dental records to do that. And if it is the person they believe it is, they think he is the shooter and the arsonist. The Duncan County Sheriff says the accused shooter in this case is the father of a Kennett police officer. The new Madrid County coroner says there's no visible trauma to Crystal Ramirez's body, but the sheriff says he'll continue to investigate how she died. There was about six bullets, the homeowner told me, and uh, thankfully none of those bullets did go into the home and everyone was safe, but there were children inside at the time, which is very startling. I just want to show you this tree that we found here off of Highway 61 on Moore Drive. As you can see, it's pulled up the ground and even pulled up a lot of the asphalt as well. This is what the house looks like now, but I want to come around and show you how exactly hot this fire was. This is the front of a car that was sitting right in front of the fire and you know, you can see the home where all the wood burned, but this is metal and this car just was ripped through by this fire. Family and neighbors say this has been going on for a while and it's been a difficult process to get all three of the children removed from this home. This is where a 12 year old boy with Asperger's has been living. The Missouri Highway Patrol says there are leads that Thompson is at his parents house and they visited to check, but his parents say he's not there. The Coast Guard is still looking into what caused this crash. And if you look over to the side here, you can see a barge that's almost completely submerged in water. The pastor at North Point Church of the Nazarene says he got here early on Sunday morning and when he saw his smashed door, he thought it was an accident, but as he went inside, he realized it was anything but. Sheree Honeycutt live at the car wash. Come on, sing it, Sheree. I know a lot of people are going to be out there. Car today. wash, yeah, at the car wash. Nice, nice. Car wash, yeah. Let me introduce you to McGee. He is a sweetheart. We've become best friends. Today is one of those days where I, I'm really seriously questioning why I get paid to do this. Let me show you what's left of the Drury Lodge. Pretty much this. And this giant pile over here, it feels a little miserable, but I'm happy that I get to spend the morning with you, Jim and Crystal. Um, let me just say the winds keep picking up and it does feel like little icicles on my face. Is this gun real or fake? Can you tell? What if you were 20 feet away? Coming up at five, I'll show you the best way to break into a car to save a pet or a child. Three pages of new regulations that make flying legally possible for non pilots. I spoke with one Heartland business owner who says this changes everything. When we first met the Gregory's, they were waiting and praying for their toddler to get a heart transplant. On Christmas, his parents say they got their miracle a new heart for Liam. After months of recovery, he's back at home and living up to his nickname, Superman. Tell me a little bit about what you've done oh. in the 18 years you've been running. <laughs> it's not anything great. I'm just very persistent. This is I've run about 1,658 marathons. That's it. That's it. That's, that's all. all. I, that's all. I, I'm embarrassed. That's all. That's all I can do. <laughs> <laughs> How many marathons have you run just this year? Uh, this year, about uh, 55 or something. It's well, April. It's know. April. Yeah, I got. I got to pick it up. You're <laughs> absolutely right. Experience in this went heavily. I, I would do it again a hundred times. Words from a father mourning his daughter and fighting for what he says is justice. The fight ain't done. Ju there's still ain't justice yet. Today, the Butler County prosecuting attorney Kevin Barber says he will not be filing charges against Ben Russell in the hit and run death of 13 year old Heavenly Hafford. This comes after evidence was released from the Poplar Bluff Police Department last week showing the teen's DNA was in fact found under Russell's truck. Barber says with the evidence they currently have, it's not enough to bring charges. Stephen Hafford believes something needs to be done. It ain't right to just run over a 13-year-old and drive away. If we need to change the law, we need to stand up and go to Jeff and change the law. For months, the Butler County Prosecuting Attorney's Office says a special prosecutor may be put in place. But today, they said with the lack of evidence, they will not seek one at this point. With only one driver charged in this case, Hafford says he's touched and how the community has rallied behind him and his daughter. It's, it's, it's great knowing that the community's here to help me. Because the bond between Hafford and his daughter is one that can't be broken. 
it's got her fingerprints and mine. And on the back it says, uh, Heavenly and Stephen together forever. Sheree Honeycutt, Heartland News. Kathy, Karen McGinnis brought her van into the Walmart Supercenter here in Poplar Bluff for routine maintenance, and she left without a way to get around. I spoke with Walmart, but I want you to hear her story first. It's the way I get around. It's, it's basically my legs. Karen McGinnis has been in a wheelchair most of her life, so she's used to sitting in one place. However, after police say a Walmart employee crashed her car, she's been in the house quite a while. Today marks 45 days. Four walls, or how many more walls you want to call it, gets closed in. Back on June 5th, she took her car here to the Walmart Supercenter in Poplar Bluff for an oil change and new tires. McGinnis says usually companies let her drive the car herself. They said no, for safety's sake, they didn't want me to drive it in. The Poplar Bluff police report shows the employee drove the car using a bucket as a seat. When he drove over the lip, it caused the driver to hit the accelerator, causing the van to crash. They told me it was a total loss. She had two appraisals done, both showing body work alone was more than $8,000. They realized that there was more damage than what it was worth, plus they didn't know what the handicap equipment cost. Since then, she's been communicating with Walmart. McGinnis says they haven't made a formal offer, but started with $6,500 and went up to $16,000. Vans run anywhere from 60 on up. McGinnis says all their offer discussions have been over the phone, so she doesn't have those numbers on paper. I'm not expecting special treatment. I just want, I took a van in that I could drive and that I could get around in. That's all I'm asking for is a van that will work for me. Walmart did call me back about this issue and they said that they're speaking to the store and they're also speaking to their department that, that handles their claims. So there's a lot of uh, things going on here and we will definitely keep you updated as we get those new details. Live local late breaking, Sheree Honeycutt, Heartland News. He's getting better by the day. <laughs> Liam Gregory's parents say after a successful heart transplant surgery, their son's recovery is an uphill battle. And that first night was the worst. Um, he was not doing good at all. He made it through it like he always does. He's Superman. Now, more than a month later, things are slowly moving in the right direction. He's playing in the halls with his big brother, Riley. He doesn't have to be hooked up to all the machines for, for a little bit. And uh, he thinks he's just being a normal boy driving around in a little car. And laughing in therapy. Yeah, I do, do you need it? <laughs> but communication is the hardest part. Liam will have to learn how to speak again. He knows he, he could do it before and now he can't and he doesn't understand why he can't. Liam will also have to learn how to walk and wear a mask for the first year whenever he goes outside. The Gregory's say it won't be easy, but they tell me they're lucky. I know that somebody had, they had to lose a child in order to give me a gift of Liam getting to survive. So for Christmas is always gonna be my favorite holiday and their worst. And so I really want to thank them. I don't know who they are, <laughs> but I hope that they can see this someday <laughs> and know that I appreciate them from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Liam's surgeries leave behind scars he'll have forever, but his dad doesn't want him to feel different. Just a scar, so he's not the only one that has one. And so we'll have two other boys that, that won't have scars, hopefully. And I just don't want him to feel left out. Two other boys, which means Jessica is having another baby. You're in labor. <laughs> yeah. You're in labor right now. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's a little rough. Jessica's doctor says she could give birth at any time. She tells me she's anxious for the whole family to be back home. I honestly forget some of the stuff in our house, what it looks like. and. <laughs> to take him home and just be like a real family is it's going to be the best day of my life, I think. And while the Gregories don't know the family who helped save their son, they feel like they're getting to know them through Liam. We like to think that a little bit of their child lives on in Liam. He's actually more lovable. He grips me so tight and he actually has started to pat my back when he hugs me. And I feel like that's just, it's new. It's so different. I love it. In St. Louis, Sheree Honeycutt. Heartland News.